Welcome. Today I am going to talk about container gardening. I'm Donna Oftenberg. I'm with the University of Missouri Extension and I am excited to be here to talk to you about how to plant into container gardens. The first and foremost thing that you need to keep in mind is you need a container with holes and that way you have adequate drainage. The next thing that you need is a peat moss based potting mix. You pick this up at most of the retail outlets. All it is is a potting mix with peat moss and perlite in it. And it, it, it's wonderful for plants because it provides uh, adequate drainage, but it also holds enough moisture. Make sure to pre-moisten it before you plant into it. And so you just take some water and you pour it in not too much and then you just mix it up now what's too wet too wet is when you can squeeze water out of it um, you only want it as wet as a uh, wrung out sponge so it should clump slightly in your hand and you just want to lightly fill the pot with soil don't ever compact it you want it to stay fairly light And you want to fill it up to where it's about an inch from the rim of the pot. Okay. So about like this. Okay. So what can you put in this pot? Well, you can put vegetables. You can put annuals. Actually, you can even put perennials. I like a lot of times to put herbs in. When you're planting in these pots, make sure you don't overcrowd. So in a pot like this, this is about a 12 inch pot, you want to put one to two plants. If you go with a 15 inch pot, you can go with three plants. Anything bigger than that, you can plant four to six plants, depending on how big they get. I know it's so easy for most of us um, to think, well, there's so much room here and they only take up a little bit of the pot. Well, they grow fast and they will take up that pot really quickly. Now, if you're wanting to do flowers, you want a thriller, something that goes tall, something that fills, so a filler and a spiller. And so uh, this creates a nice combination for your container. And so a thriller would be something that has a really pretty color or a pretty uh, nice texture, or it is real tall, like a spike or something. Something that goes in the midground or a filler would be things like Dusty Millers. You could go with Verbenia. Uh, you could do Petunias. Anything like that that just fills in around that thriller. And of course, you want something that spills over the pot, um, such as Calabrochia. There are some trailing Verbenias you can get. Um, there's all sorts of things on the market that, that sends shoots out over the pot. Uh, sweet potato vine is another real popular one. So when you go to plant, let's say we're going to plant some herbs in our pots. So we take our uh, plant out of the pot and you want to say tickle the roots. Um, and that's just gently pulling at the roots a little to get them out of that circular uh, growing pattern that they have. So once you get it out, you dig your hole about the same depth that it was in the pot. Just set it in and you want to smooth the soil around. Once again, I've got a rosemary here. You want to pull it out. Some of them are hard to get out a little, so you got to tug a little. Nice white roots here. You want to always make sure when you're buying plants, take them out of the pot and take a look at those roots. If they're white roots, they're nice and healthy. If they're brown to black roots, that means that they've been overwatered or they've been sitting too long in that pot. So I really watch that root color. But once again, all those roots are growing in a circular pattern. So you just basically want to pull some of those roots loose. Don't tear them up too much. Once again, make your hole and set it down no deeper than what it was in the original pot. Okay. All right. So once we get the plants potted, in, in where we want them. We now have to think about fertilizer. I really like a slow release fertilizer. That way if I forget to fertilize on a weekly basis, I, it's got my back. And so these are usually our uh, three to four month fertilizer. They come as little beads. There's several different brands on the market that you can buy. And they're just little pebbles and you put about a ta tablespoon 
in around the plants. And like I said, it feeds for three months. Uh, make sure to reapply it midsummer, and that way you have uh, replenished that fertilizer. Another way to fertilize is to get the water soluble fertilizer, well, which means that you can put them in a watering can, fill the watering can full of water, stir it around a little, and then you're ready to go uh, putting in your fertilizer into the pot. When you're using these two in combination, they make a really good feeding program for any of the plants, the vegetables, the herbs, or the flowers. Now, if you're wanting to plant uh, vegetables in containers, watch how many you put in. So with cabbage plants, you can probably get away with putting two in this size. Um, if you're going with, uh, let's say, green beans, you could probably go with six in this pot. Carrots, you could go with... 12 to 16 in this pot. And so just keep in mind, any vegetables can be planted in a pot. If you go with the tomato or squash or something that gets a lot bigger, um, then you need to go with a bigger pot. Tomatoes should never be put in anything smaller than a five gallon bucket. I really like the farmer's mineral tubs they, they get for, for cattle. Those work really good for tomatoes because they're big. Now, when we are watering, you're going to find that you're going to water every day this summer. This pot's going to dry out. Uh, the other thing that I might need to mention is if you are going to use saucers at the bottom of your pots to collect the water, uh, you, after you've watered, you want to let it set for about an hour and then dump that water because you don't want the, the root ball sitting in water all the time because that leads to root rot um, and that leads to more problems. Let's talk about sun exposure. Remember that all plants are different on what they need on sun. For the most part, if you're going to plant vegetables in these pots, you need six hours of sun or more. With some of the leafy greens, such as lettuce, mustard, spinach, you can get by with as, as less as four hours. Um, however, if you're going with annuals, flowers, um, you want to hit that four to six hour mark on sun. And so if you've got a covered porch, just make sure they're pushed to the edge so they get as much sun as they want. Herbs, once again, you also need four to six hours. Always put the, push them to the edge to where they're getting the most sun that they can possibly have. And that way they will produce nicely and you can get quite a few harvest from them. So, we're, I'm going to show you how to plant one of these salad boxes. So this can be found at uh, the Maryland Extension website. Great plans uh, for having just a salad box. And so as you can see, it's one by fours with screen wire, and then we have the hard, hardware cloth on the back. So you can use a newspaper to line it. Today I'm going to actually use paper towels because that's what I have handy. So you just put the paper towels down and all you're doing is blocking uh, the soil from falling out the bottom. So we're just putting this in, okay? Then we're going to take the soil that I have available and we're going to put it in. And this is a, uh, once again, a potting mix. Um, as you can see, the, the peat moss and the perlite. There is a little bit of slow release fertilizer in it. I really like potting mixes without the slow release fertilizer, but if that's all you can find, um, then that's all you're gonna be able to use. So you just fill it up to about an inch away from the top. And I have pre-moistened this soil. Make sure it's all nice and level. And so what I do is I will actually just make trough and then I will start sowing into this. I will put lettuce, a lineup of radishes, maybe a lineup of spinach. Okay, so today I'm going to plant lettuce and this is Black Seeded Simpson. And we just want to get some in our hand. We're not gonna sow it real thick. We're just gonna take probably and put about maybe 20 seeds in this row. So just be sparingly with the seeds. Okay, then we're going to get some kale. And just remember, all this is gonna be eaten when it's still small. And then we're gonna plant mustard here. Once again, we're not really gonna overdo it. We're only gonna put 
about 20 seeds in there. And if we get it too thick by accident, we can actually come back and thin once they start coming up. Because as you can see in this one, they're pretty thick. And so what we need to do start doing is thinning while we, you know, while we're picking to eat them. So once we get all those in, I will actually even take uh, masking tape and tape along the edge and then write what each row is. Once you have all this done, then you can um, either, you know, vibrate it to get them the, some of the areas to close, or you can come and just gently close them. All these seeds get less than a quarter of an inch of cover. And so just be careful, do not bury them too deep or they will not come up. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you learned a lot about container gardening and I hope you have a plant-filled summer and enjoy it.